Hi, I'm Amelia and welcome to my channel, So Amelia. This week I'm talking all about my plans for my sewing in April. Hi, thank you so much for watching. It is so lovely to have you here with me as I share my sewing journey. Thank you to those of you who have subscribed already to my channel. It's really exciting to have you here. And to those who haven't subscribed, it would be so great to have you as one of my regular viewers. So if you haven't already, do click on the subscribe button below this video and hit the notification bell and that way you'll be made aware of when I publish future videos. So as with all my videos, I will make sure to link all of the patterns and fabrics that I talk about in the description box below, and there will also be chapters there. So if there's any part of the video that you wish to skip through or skip to, then do just check below for those chapter descriptions. So I'm going to start off by chatting about what I'm wearing very briefly. Now today I'm wearing the French Navy Forsyth dress. Now I had the absolute pleasure of testing the Forsyth dress expansion pack. Now this dress normally comes with a button back closure, but in this case, the expansion pack shows you how to put the buttons in the front and it also comes with these gorgeous balloon sleeves and I had so much fun putting this together with this striped fabric that I bought from my local fabric shop. It is a lovely ECAT fabric and I'm looking forward to wearing this one in the spring without tights and boots but that is how I've been styling it up for winter with tights, boots and a nice warm cardigan. The buttons on the dress come from Ethel and Joan, one of my favourite places to buy buttons, and they are this little flower shape, and I just love them on this dress. I think they look really fun with the striped print. And then I'm also wearing today my Ethel and Joan earrings that I bought in their latest spring release, and these are also a flower shape, so I thought they went really well with today's dress. I absolutely love Ethel and Joan products. I think they're so much fun to wear, and I especially love them in this pearl colour, so these are great fun to wear, and I'm looking forward to wearing them even more in the springtime with my lovely spring and summer dresses. The other thing I'm wearing today is this headband that I made following a tutorial by Bringing Sewing Back. She's over on Instagram, and I'll link to her Instagram below. It's just saved in one of her highlights. It's very quick and easy to put together, and it's nice to have headbands that match the dresses that you're wearing. So I will get straight into the video for today and I'm going to start by talking about what I plan to make for the Selfless Sew April Challenge that is being run this month over on Instagram. Now it's being run by three lovely sewing vloggers, Adele who is Sew for Serenity, Crystal who is my social thread and Claire who is Stitch Hem Sew. Now these lovely ladies are running this challenge all about sewing for others in the month of April. Now the challenge is called Selfless Sew April and the hashtag to use when you do share your makes over on Instagram is Selfless Sew April 23. So I'm sure you'll know the rules of the challenge by now if you've been watching the other vloggers who have been sharing about this over on YouTube. The challenge involves simply making something for another person or a pet in your life and it can be anything. It can be a garment, it can be an accessory. There are some different categories that you can enter your makes into when you do share them on Instagram on the reveal date. Now the reveal date is the 30th of April and you need to share using that hashtag selfless so April 23 and you need to tag those three lovely ladies and I'll put all of the details about the challenge in the description box below so do go and have a look if you're interested in entering that challenge. There are over 50 sponsors with the most amazing prizes so do get involved if you would like to and sew something for somebody else this April. I love sewing for other people and the next couple of things I'm going to share with you are my plans for this challenge and for my sewing for other people this month. So let's get into it. Now the first plan I have is something for my lovely mother-in-law's birthday. Now she loves a tote bag and recently I saw over on Tamlin who is sewn on the tine. On her Instagram thread she shared a beautiful tote bag by Soften Studios and it's the Soften tote bag. And I just thought that looked like such a great practical but also beautiful make. Now you'll know if you watched last week's video that I recently attended the Stitch Festival had such a lovely time and managed to pick up a few different fabrics. Now I knew before I went that this was something I wanted to make in April so I was looking out for a beautiful linen canvas or cotton at the Knitting and Stitching show and the lovely sister Mintaka often stocks the most beautiful rifle paper company fabrics and she did have a beautiful linen canvas which I picked up at the Knitting and Stitching show. My mother-in-law does love her garden and so I thought this was the perfect canvas for her tote bag and whilst I was at the Stitch Festival I thought it would be a good idea to choose something for the lining from what I could see there so I could get a good match and I've gone with this very simple green cotton fabric that I think will go really nicely on the inside of that tote bag. 
So I'm looking forward to putting that together for her this month. So the Soften Tote Bag is a large quilted fully lined bag. It has an internal pocket and it's closed with a fabric tie and it also has fabric handles made from that same linen canvas fabric. It's designed to fit A4 folders and your laptop so I think it will be the perfect size for a tote bag for my mother-in-law's birthday. So that's my first plan for Selfless Sew so April 23. Now it's also my lovely mother's birthday coming up soon so I would love to sew her something for her birthday as well and recently I found this beautiful Liberty Tana Lawn and I just love that print. It is just so detailed and intricate and I just thought it was the most beautiful fabric and I always love a Tana Lawn. So what I'm going to do with that is make my mother a circle skirt similar to the one I made for the So Frugal Challenge last month. So what I did last month was I made a half circle skirt in the end due to the width of the fabric that I had and I used the By Hand London Circle Skirt Calculator. Now that's brilliant, you just pop in your waist size, your waist measurement, and they do all of the other calculations for you, and then you draw the pattern out onto some tracing paper. So I'll use the same pattern, because luckily my mother and I are very similar sizes, and what I'll do is I'll put on the really interesting scalloped pocket from the Megan Nielsen Veronica skirt pattern. Now that's another free pattern. So this is a great so frugal make, although <laughs> that challenge has now finished. So I am going to do just a lovely circle skirt from this fabric for my mother this month. I think that Liberty fabric is just so beautiful that a simple pattern like a circle skirt will just hang beautifully in the Tana Lawn and it will also just make the most of this gorgeous print. So that is my second plan for Selfless Sew April. Now the last plan I have for Selfless Sew April is actually three garments but one plan. So let me share that with you now. For Easter each year, I do like to make my children a new garment to wear on Easter Sunday. Easter is a really special celebration to us, and I like to have something new for them to wear on Easter Sunday. Now this year, my lovely sister sent me a voucher for my birthday to one of my favorite fabric shops, which is Sew Me Sunshine. So I thought I would use that to put towards my children's Easter clothes and I've chosen these two gorgeous fabrics from Sew Me Sunshine. So this is a little floral seersucker fabric, and obviously this one is for my daughter's dress, and then I thought it went beautifully with this striped cotton, which I will use for my son's outfits. So I'll start with my boys, and I'm going to use, like I said, this beautiful striped green cotton fabric for them, and I'm going to make my new favourite shorts pattern, the Mendoza Shorts by Little Lizard King. Now, if you followed me before, you'll know I absolutely love a couple of other short patterns. I really love the free Everyday Play Shorts by Bobbins and Buttons. Those are a fantastic free pattern. I've made them loads for all three of my children. The other pattern I absolutely love is the Pie Shorts by Below the Kofi. They are another gorgeous sort of play shorts style pattern, and I'll link both of those below. But I just wanted a pair of shorts that was slightly more on the smart side for Easter Sunday, and so I have found the Mendoza Shorts pattern by Little Lizard King. Now this is a beautiful relaxed fit shorts pattern. It has a faux fly at the front, which is optional. It has front pockets. There are back pockets, which you can make either as back patch pockets or welt pockets and then it has the option for either a fully elasticated waistband or the option that I'm going to go with which is a flat front but elasticated back waistband. Now I just think the inclusion of the welt pocket on the back, the faux fly, just elevates these and makes them slightly more sort of formal looking pair of shorts. So I'm really looking forward to getting those made up. One of the things I really wanted to try to do this year was to learn some new skills. I have never made a welt pocket, but I have wanted to give it a go for quite some time. So this month is going to be the month of the welt pocket, and I'm going to start out by trying them on my son's shorts. Now obviously I will do some testers first to make sure that I can do it nice and neatly, but I do think that in this striped cotton, a little welt pocket on the back of those shorts will look just gorgeous. So that's the plan for that. Now, the brilliant thing about little lizard cooking patterns is they do come in a very wide size range, and these shorts actually come in two versions. There's the baby Mendoza shorts and then the Mendoza shorts patterns. But overall, those two patterns come from a size newborn right through to an age 14. So this is a great pattern in terms of being able to use it for my boys for years and years to come. Now, for my daughter, I'm going to use this gorgeous seersucker here with these lovely little florals to make the peony patterns 
myrtle dress. Now again, I just think this fabric is so beautiful. It just needs quite a simple pattern that's going to let the fabric really shine. And so I thought the myrtle dress looked like the perfect dress pattern. That and my daughter said she absolutely loved the puff sleeves. So that meant we had to choose this one for this fabric. Now the myrtle dress has a very simple bodice with a curved neckline, but it has the most beautiful puffed sleeves. And then the back is just gorgeous. There is a soft sort of V at the back with a fold over closure which is fixed with buttons. And the buttons that I'm going to use, I've had in my stash for a little while and haven't known what to do with them, but I had to buy them because they were gorgeous. And now I think they will be the perfect button to go with this dress. And they are these beautiful little pink flowery buttons by Paige Joanna in collaboration with Pigeon Wishes. They are such sweet buttons and actually they match almost exactly the colors of this little pink flower in the fabric here. So I think that will be beautiful for the back of this myrtle dress. Now again, similar to Little Lizard King, peony patterns have a fantastic age range and this dress goes from age one year to 14 years old. Now I will be sizing up for this as I will probably with the shorts for my boys. My children are three, six, and nine, and I will be making their shorts and dresses in sizes four, seven, and 10, just to make sure they get that extra wear out of them. Especially with the elasticated shorts, I can definitely pull in the elastic if I want to for now, and leave a nice long tail so that I can let that out as they grow. And that way they'll hopefully get a couple of seasons wear out of these shorts. And it doesn't matter if the dress is a little long for this Easter because it will mean it will be the perfect length for next Easter. So those are my plans for Selfless Sew April, but I also have a couple of other plans for my own sewing this month and I thought I would share those with you in this video as well. Now for quite some time I have really wanted to sew some trousers for myself. I have sewn a pair of Anna Allen Persephone pants, but unfortunately seeing as I've lost a little bit of weight recently, those don't fit. Likewise, the jeans in my wardrobe are not fitting me anymore, and so I do need some new ones, but I have a terrible trouble trying to find trousers that fit in ready-to-wear stores because of the difference between my waist and hip measurements. So I've just decided to bite the bullet, and this month is the month in which I'm going to try and get started with trouser making. Now, the first pair of trousers I would like to have a go at is the Closet Core Mitchell trousers. I actually bought this pattern as soon as it came out because I absolutely love it. It is a beautiful classic trouser with pleats on the front, it has a high waistband and I just love the wide leg view of this particular trouser. I also really like the fact that you can put on adjustable waist ties at the side. I think that's amazing. I do sometimes have a bit of fluctuation in my waist measurement so that will allow me to just let them out or draw them in as I need. So I'm very excited about that feature of these trousers. There is also a tapered leg view, which has a hidden hook and bar on the inside so that there doesn't look to be any sort of fixings and fastenings from the outside. The trousers themselves do have a fly fastening and there is a facing on the inside, sort of a hidden facing for the closing of these trousers, but view B does have a button closure as well. I am really looking forward to giving these a go. I will probably make a quick toile just to check the fit of these because I will need to do some grading between my waist and hip. But the fabric I want to sew these in eventually is a wool and viscose blend. I think it's a suiting fabric and I cannot remember where I got this from, but I just bought it because it's such a lovely lightweight, but I think it will be perfect for trousers for the spring and summer, because although these are full length trousers, I think they'll be really breathable in this beautiful fabric. So I'm very excited about making those. I have got all of the D-rings now. I've got all of the bias binding. I've got the twill tape and the D-rings. I've got all of the bits and pieces put together, ready to give these trousers a go. I think I've just been really terrified about making them. These also have a welt pocket on the back. So I'm hoping that after making the shorts for my sons, I'll feel a bit more confident about putting a welt pocket into these beautiful trousers. Right, so the last plan I have for myself this month, if I get this far, because there's quite a lot to be doing this month. So the last plan is to try and have a go at the Goldfinch Studios Jones trousers. Now this is a zero waist pattern, which I think is really interesting because I've wanted to have a go at a zero waist pattern for a while. And I saw Amelia Allen Sews make these over on her YouTube channel, which totally inspired me to give them a go. And I'll link her video below where she does a bit of a sew along almost for these trousers. 
Now Goldfinch Studios says this is a playful and modern take on a classic trouser and I think that's exactly what they look like. I just love the gentle balloon shape of these trousers. They are slightly tapered with ankle pleats and a cuff at the ankle and they also have a high waist and an elasticated back which sounds perfect. Now the size range on this is excellent. It goes from a 25 inch to a 64 inch waist and from a 33 inch to a 72 inch hip which is fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to giving this a go and what I'm going to use is one of the fabrics I actually shared originally in my So Frugal video and it's this denim here. I cannot remember again where I got this from because it's been in my stash for so long. Like I said trouser making is something I have wanted to have a go at for the longest time. I've just been really scared of fitting them but I'm planning to overcome that fear this month and I'm going to use this denim for the Jones trousers. It's not too heavy in terms of its weight. I think it will hold the balloon shape of the trousers though really, really nicely. And it's a great color, I think, for the spring and summer. It will go with a lot of the tops that are already in my wardrobe. So that's what I'm planning to use for these trousers. And if I love them, then obviously I might try and make them again in a different fabric, perhaps some lovely twill fabric, or I have some more bright and outrageous fabrics that could be perfect for trousers in my stash, so we'll just see how these go. So those are my plans for April, quite a few things there to be working away on, and Easter is early this year, so I am hoping that I will get those finished in time for Easter Sunday, and the bag finished in time for my mother-in-law's birthday, which is also in early April. So I do hope you enjoyed those plans, do let me know below what you're sewing this April, and if you're making anything for anyone else and entering into this challenge do let me know what you have chosen to make it's always really inspiring hearing about what you're sewing so do leave me a comment in the box below thank you so much for watching i hope you have a lovely week ahead full of lots of happy sewing and i look forward to catching up with you in my next video goodbye